Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. Thank you for joining me. The title today is Stealth or Invisible Antennas for the HF Bands. Now, why do you need an invisible or what they sometimes call a stealth antenna? Well, the reason usually is that uh, there are some restrictions. For some reason you can't erect a, a normal antenna in your garden. It may be local regulations, the local authorities forbid aerials. It could be that there's problems with the neighbours. Or it could be that you just don't want people to know that you're a radio ham and operating a ham radio station from your home. It really doesn't matter what the reasons are. These reasons are very important to the owner of the property, uh, the home radio operator, because he doesn't want to upset people. So let's talk about um, a, a very simple, straightforward stealth antenna. Now, a stealth antenna or an invisible antenna needs to be invisible. Well, you can't actually make an antenna invisible. Um, you can use very, very thin wire, but the problem with very, very thin wire is that it breaks and also it has to be supported on some sort of mast. So what we're going to talk about now is an antenna that is actually invisible because it's hidden. You can see it, but nobody else can see it. And this antenna covers five bands, 80, 40, 20, 15 and 10 meters. And it's also very compact. Well, the total length of this antenna is just around about 18 meters. So it'll fit a lot of gardens and you can easily bend the antenna. So you could take it down the garden and across the bottom of the garden. And if you've got a really small garden, you could bring it back up slightly. So 18 metres long will fit, I guess, an awful lot of gardens, even though they're quite small. So it's, uh, it's quite an interesting project. So the idea of this antenna, or the, the, what sparked off this, this video, was me seeing a, uh, a Radcom uh, technical topics uh, item this article or this design first appeared in radio Com communication 1975 and i put up on the screen now a picture of a garden and this is a typical garden of a new build house um, this garden is not a bad size some of the gardens be smaller but this is a typical um, picture of a new build house you've got a lawn you've got a fence you've got neighbors you're totally exposed there's no trees there's no shrubs how do you puts an antenna up for the HF bands that will give you contacts. Well, the simple answer is that you use that fence as both a support and a means of hiding the antenna. Because the fence is wooden, it's non-conductive and it's ideal for attaching uh, an antenna to. Now, this antenna that I'm going to describe will act as an NVIS antenna, NVIS, which stands for Near Vertical Incident Skywave. It means, in effect, that the antenna will actually project a very high angle of radiation. It's, it's not quite straight up and down, but it's not far off straight up and down. It's not the sort of radiation pattern that you often see mentioned in uh, videos on, uh, on, on YouTube, because most people are trying to work DX. But the good thing about NVIS is that it can produce very strong signals over fairly short distances. Now, I think the band that is most suitable for NVIS is the 40 meter or seven megahertz band. Uh, the um, NVIS antenna operating on that band will give you signals distances of around about 300 to 300, 400 miles. And when the band is working, it will give you good S9 signals, both transmit and receive over these fairly short distances. But it does mean to say that you can get on the air. And very often you'll compete with conventional antennas because your antenna is actually configured so that it produces a very high angle of radiation. And a lot of dipoles, even medium sort of height dipoles, won't emit as much high angle radiation as this antenna will. So it's good for short skip contacts. It will also work on the 80 meter band, although on 80 meters uh, can be a bit quiet in the in the daylight hours, but it will work um, towards the uh, uh, evening time. 
and it will of course work on the higher bands as well again you'll be talking about short skip but short skip can be up to sort of 500 miles 600 miles even further and of course do remember that any antenna emits a certain amount of lower angle radiation it may be well down but it's there and sometimes it works so let's take a look at this NVIS um, stealth or invisible antenna 5 bands 80 through to 10 meters I'm going to draw it here and it's very much like half a W3DZZ multiband dipole. In fact, it's half a dipole. And in fact, it's halfway between a dipole and a vertical because we're going to feed this antenna almost at ground level where you'd feed a vertical. It's a quarter wave long, which is like a vertical, but it's horizontal and therefore it's half a dipole. So in some ways it's a cross between a dipole and a vertical. So let me draw let me draw this now. Um, you've got well fence is probably a fence is usually around about two meters tall. So you've got a short two meter length of wire. And then you go across um, for uh, approximately 33 feet and you insert a trap, and we'll talk about the trap in a minute. And then you carry along for about another 22 feet, and that's the length of your antenna. So 33 and 22 is what 30 is, uh, it's, it's less than 60 foot. Um, so if you've got a garden that's only 40 foot long, well, you run it down one side of the fence and bend it round and, uh, and uh, along the other side of the fence, and you've got your antenna fitted. So it, uh, it's quite easy to fit uh, an awful lot of gardens, even if they're fairly compact. Now the antenna resonates um, on the five bands courtesy of that trap and the trap needs to be made exactly as uh, the original. The capacity for the tuned circuit of the trap is 100 picrofarads, 100 puff um, capacitor. Now you can easily make a capacitor by using a length of RG58 coax cable that'll easily handle 100 watts and I think a length of uh, one foot length of uh, RG58 is about 25 picrofarad. So if you have four foot, uh, four foot length of RG58, uh, you should get around 100 picrofarad um, and just coil that up and that forms the capacitor. And this, in a case like this, um, it's very handy to have one of these little um, meters. This, this measures inductance and capacitance and I picked it up on eBay for about, around about £40, pounds, I think, and it's, it's a good investment because uh, it's quite amazing the number of times uh, that uh, you can use it. So uh, that is one way of being very, very accurate. And the coil um, is 12 turns of 16 gauge on a one and a half inch former. 12 turns of 16 gauge on a one half inch former and a 100 uh, PF capacitor. Now, you must use that 100 PF capacitor um, that is key to the antenna working and provided the coil um, is uh, causes it to, to resonate on the 7 megahertz band then that's fine um, so get the capacity right and then wind the coil so to feed the antenna we just run the wire along the top of the fence um, with the trap in circuit and we take um, a short length at the uh, feed point uh, end of the of the of the uh, antenna wire um, down towards ground level. We drive a copper stake into the ground, and we then attach the outer sheath into the coax to the copper stake, and we attach the inner conductor to the wire element. Now I know that some of you are going to say, well, what about um, uh, a counterpoise? Will a counterpoise work? Well. Um, a counterpoise may work, although the original article su suggests um, that maybe a counterpoise is not necessary. If you do decide to use a counterpoise, and by all means try it out, I would suggest you lie that counterpoise wire on the ground, because you don't really want it to be in the air and resonant. It could cause some problems. But try a counterpoise on the ground. It may or may not give, uh, give a significant improvement. It's worth a try. Now, how does the antenna work in terms of VSWR? Well, apparently, um, the VSWR on the uh, 80, 40, and 20 meter bands um, was quite good. It was uh, approximately 1.5 to 1. 
And uh, on the other bands, uh, it could be up to three to one, but of course three to one is uh, neither here nor there if you've got an internal antenna tuner in your transceiver. And even if you've got a sort of 20 or 30 foot run of coax cable, or 10 meter run, should I say, <laughs> Um, that uh, that small VSWR is not going to cause much uh, loss at all. So you can erect this antenna in a small garden, and in fact you can bend it twice. So even if you've only got a garden that's what um, uh, five or seven meters long, you should be able to fit it around the fence. It is invisible because nobody nobody can see it. I don't think for one minute it um, will. Uh, um, bring you foul of the uh, regulate planning regulations because you could run a wire along that fence to support shrubs so I don't think that running that wire around the around the garden is uh, going to um, breach any any regulations and it's a way of getting on the air and as I said at the outset the NVIS um, uh, antenna system which this really is um, is very good you can get some really good contacts bank conditions have to be right you know, I mean, a 40 meters sometimes, 40 meters is a great band for NVIS, but it can also be a real pig of a band if the conditions aren't right. But you can get on the air, and of course you've got four other bands to work as well. So if you've got um, this sort of situation where you've got planning problems or you just don't want to erect a, an antenna that's visible, give this a try. It doesn't cost much. And I think you could get some fun out of it. I have used NVIS in my own garden here and had some excellent results on 40 metres. Quite amazing results when the band conditions are right. So give it a try. As usual, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been of some information to you, particularly if you've got some problems with getting antennas up. And I thank you for your continued support on this channel, which is very much appreciated. And also so your support on our um, sales channel, uh, the, the website and uh, the direct sales on the phone or whatever, down at our Portsmouth location. Don't forget that we also have a um, discount code. Now this discount code doesn't last for very long. I'll put the current disc discount code below on this video, but it will, I think, expire at the end of this week. So just keep watching our videos and our videos, the, the most recent videos, will show you or indicate what the discount code is. And if you use that, you save 5%, which is quite worth, well worth having. Thank you for watching this video. I much appreciate your support. You take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.